Back in the 90s, almost every fighter had background animations like this. Short and simple, and they looped forever. Back then, I found them a little off-putting if I'm honest, but over time I've grown to really like them. They are very much a part of 2D fighters, and even to this day, modern ones still have them. The Neo Geo has support for these automatic animations built right in. They are most often used for backgrounds, but any sprite can use them. They are simple to set up, so most Neo games use them at least a little. Let's take a look at how they work. This topic was requested by a viewer. Got a topic you'd like me to cover? Let me know in the comments. Most animations in a game are done manually. The game's code runs and maintains them. Any animations that are more complex or the game needs precise control over are done manually. How a game does these manual animations depends on how the game developer chose to do it, so it varies from game to game. But these simpler automatic animations are done by the system itself. The game just needs to set them up properly, and every game would set them up in the same way. Auto animations must be 4 or 8 frames long, and they all run at the same speed. Every frame of the animation is on the screen for the same duration. These really are very basic animations. The game can decide how fast they run, from about 4 seconds per frame at the slowest setting to about 16 milliseconds per frame at the fastest. Both of these extremes are pretty silly. Most games tend to go with about 80 to 100 milliseconds per frame. Older fighters sometimes make the animations run faster when you went around. Later fighters stop doing this, as you can admit it's kinda cheesy. On the Neo Geo, Samurai Showdown 1 was the only game I could find that does this. Does anyone know of any others? And what is this guy in King of Fighters 96 even doing? Auto animations can be used for other things, often to give a stage more ambiance, such as these trees in Top Hunter or this waterfall in Blue's Journey. Sometimes they are used for really little things, like the propellers on the airplanes here in Strikers 1945. SNK vs. Capcom used auto animations extensively. With them disabled, most backgrounds are completely still. Blazing Stars Stage 2 Background is partially done with auto animations. I really like this one. Coordinating the tiles moving across the screen and auto animating them at the same time to pull this off had to be tricky. But the end result is great. I always found this background really impressive. Okay, but how does a game set them up? And how does the Neo Geo get involved? Only sprites can have auto animations. If you missed my last video on how graphics work, I recommend giving it a watch first, as we'll be using some concepts from that video. When setting up the tiles a sprite will use, the game can also specify if a tile has a 4 or 8 frame auto animation. So within one sprite, you can have some tiles doing auto animations and others not. While the game is running, the system has a counter going. And whenever it grabs a tile out of video RAM that has opted into auto animation, it will replace the bottom 2 or 3 bits of the tile index with the current counter's value. 2 bits are replaced for 4 frame animations and 3 bits are for 8. This is a binary thing, don't worry if you're not familiar with it. All that's really happening is the system is slightly changing the tiles index over time depending on where the counter is currently at. By setting a different tile index, a different tile will get displayed on the screen, causing the tile to animate. This is nice and simple, and it does work well, but there's a catch. The way the system is manipulating the bits means the tile index will always end in 0 through 3 for 4 frame animations, or 0 through 7 for 8 frame ones. So when packing tiles into the CROM, tiles that do auto animation need to be placed in certain spots for them to work correctly. Here is a simple auto animation I created to help illustrate this. My graphics tool SROMCROM knows how to pack tiles correctly for auto animation. After running it and taking a look at the results in the tile viewer, we can see where the auto animation tiles ended up. All tiles for the first frame landed on an index that is a multiple of four and all tiles for the second frame landed on an index that is a multiple of 4 plus 1, and so on and so forth for the rest of the frames. Here is a real auto animation from Real Bout Fiddle Fury. It's a bit harder to see, but it is placed in the same way. That's all the game needs to do. With all this setup, the sprites will animate on their own. The game controls how fast auto animations are ran by sending a value to the LSBC mode register. We're not going to get into what a register is, but just know it's a way the game and system can talk with each other. This value tells the system how long each frame should stay on the screen. There is only one global value, so all auto animations throughout the entire game all run at the same speed. But the game can change the speed of these animations whenever it wants. It can also turn the animations off entirely if it needs to. Now that you know how simple these animations are, 
it can be a little disappointing to see when a game chooses not to use them. Like Shock Troopers here, it would be nice if these trees moved around a bit in the breeze. Or Fight Fever. Why are these people perfectly still? Come on, Fight Fever. Sometimes games choose to do manual animation anyway. The crowd here on Sun Beach in Fatal Fury 1 are animated manually, while the crowd over here in Pao Pao Cafe used auto animations. Maybe they felt the Sun Beach crowd's movement couldn't fit into 4 or 8 frames? Just a guess. And games can use a mixture at times, like this awesome background at King of Fighters 94. So what are your favorite background animations from Neo Geo games? Let me know in the comments, because I'm sure I miss some good ones. Anyway, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.